very good afternoon to you both. Professor, if I start with you, um, what, what is the latest in terms of hard data on how bad e-cigarettes are? Are we now suggesting that they are as bad as cigarettes themselves? Um, so there's data from my lab showing that proteases which cause emphysema are um, upregulated to the same level in vaping as in smoking. So potentially, yes. But, but presumably there's no tar, so there is a, an aspect of improvement at least. Um, everything I've looked at in the lungs suggests there's, um, there's similar levels of um, change, even without the tar. And, and is this something that you feel uh, the manufacturers would have always been aware of and, and thus had they advertised to the contrary it would be a, a knowing misrepresentation of the facts? I honestly don't know whether they did or not. As um, I think when e-cigarettes e first came on the market about 10 years ago, um, people thought they could use products which were safe to eat and then put them in the lungs and um, they should be fine. But I mean, I think it's fair to say that many companies put them on the market without doing the same extensive testing you'd see in the pharmaceutical industry, for example. Chris, we're, we're seeing these warnings, these public health warnings around vaping right now, and, and certainly these deaths and some of the other alarms that are, are being raised. Is there a warning to be had for investors here, too? I ask that because Juul obviously saw a lot of investment. It saw companies, it saw venture capitalists making investment because of strong growth. Uh, but in terms of all of the headlines, all of the regulations, the lack of uh, a lot of research right now, what happens next? I think that's a great question, Morgan. And what I tell investors is, look, if you want a company who's going to have its executives hauled before Congress every few months, and you want a company who's very well-being from a financial growth perspective, could be regulated by the FDA out of existence, and you want a company who potentially in the judicial branch, you know, the judiciary could face class action lawsuits in the future for targeting kids and the potential danger to kids, then e-cigarettes are the company for you. I think that what we see with investors, generally speaking, is that if you have a policy risk from all three branches of government, the judiciary, executive and legislative, usually that leads to rough roads for those companies going forward. Uh, Dr. Tarrant, are you sort of of the view, are you suggesting that you feel like e-cigarettes need to carry the same level of health warnings on the packaging as cigarettes do? Um, from a lungs perspective, yes. I can't talk about the heart or other organs, but everything I've seen in the lungs suggests they're just as bad as cigarettes. And now, you know, we have, I've been saying this for a few years, and now we're starting to see people get hospitalized and die from it. So it seems a reasonable thing to say. And is that because the nicotine levels uh, are higher than certain cigarettes, or is it because of other ingredients or, or the way in particular that an e-cigarette delivers those ingredients uh, to, to the, the smoker, the user? So we found the nicotine levels are about the same in cigarettes as in e-cigarettes, um, but the effects of some of the other chemicals, so the propylene glycol, the flavors, we actually don't fully understand yet. Chris, the fact that you have Altria that's invested in Juul, and now, of course, you have this proposed merger with Philip Morris, the tobacco companies in general, is this going to open them up to more potential oversights, to more potential litigation, depending on how some of these uh, vaping-related injuries play out? Yeah, I think it is going to. The tobacco companies have a long history uh, for decades now of understanding the potential uh, litigation risk as well as the regulatory risk. So it's something just, that's just become a part of their business model. And at the end of the day, what it really boils down to is, are the profits going to outweigh the potential penalties for targeting kids and for potentially putting a product on the market that could negatively impact the Americans' public health? And in the case of big tobacco, historically, the profits have outweighed uh, the potential penalties. So will that be the same case for e-cigarettes? We'll wait and see. Dr. Robert Tarrant, Chris Meekins, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you.